What's up, Bodyweight Warriors, and uh, good morning. Welcome back to another episode of the Bodyweight Bulk, as it's been called now. I really enjoyed this new focus with training, and I've enjoyed making this series so far. I know we're on, a, on episode three or whatever, but I think there's been some good information, or at least from the comments and chatting to people, they seem to have got some benefit out of it. So I thought, really today, uh, I wanted to lay down like the last bit when it comes to things you might want to know about potentially bulking, coming from a skinny guy and then uh, we'll carry on with the rest of the series. Excuse me. Molly. No. And uh, that last section is reps or training. How do we set up our training to uh, optimize muscle mass? Because I think there's a lot of confusion and we also need to make the differentiation between you know, natural athletes versus enhanced athletes, etc. Um, and also how it applies to body weight training as well because obviously this is slightly different to you know, a lot of the literature or a lot of the recommendations out there which are just in regards to weighted training so we're going to cover all that i'm going to share with you also today's session which is a pool workout session so i think really the last one in this series that hasn't been covered i've done legs push and pull so far so that's the three that i'm doing at the moment also anything else you want me to cover in this series i've got kind of some ideas of things i want to do but just let me know leave a comment in the comment section down below give me some feedback let me know what you thought of what i talked about in this video but also yeah if you want me to like bring up anything in the future or talk about anything because ultimately it's a conversation so i'd like to have some back and forth Right, we have the usual mountain of, uh, of food. This time we've got about 600-ish grams of potatoes, so about 120 grams of carbs, and then uh, a leftover portion of chili, which is about 80 to 100 grams of protein. It's about 400 grams of uh, ground beef, uh, and then just some other roast veg. Nice, simple breakfast. Leftovers all round, kind of what we chatted about on the last video, um, sticking to those two meal splits. So. 1500 plus calories per meal. Um, today it's actually I'm eating much much earlier so it's about 9 30 at the moment and I'm trying to bring my eating back because recently I've been training later kind of normal like five six o'clock in the evening and it doesn't mean I don't end up eating until maybe like eight o'clock nine o'clock with a two hour session so although that's fine um, since I've been trying to eat more calories and just the fact that I am having a lot of food after that final training session it's just not great for my sleep, eating that much food so close to kind of when I'm trying to go to sleep. So I'm trying to bring everything back a little bit, train a bit earlier, eat a bit earlier, and just help improve that sleep quality. Did it last night, heart rate during the night was way lower, heart rate variability was up, and the amount of REM, not so much deep, but the amount of REM sleep that I had went up. So it's interesting. If you're more about the kind of simple bulking food sort of side of things, check out the last episode, I did a full day of eating. And certainly going to do lots more where we maybe talk a little bit more in detail about the nutrition side of things because I'd love to share that with you and um, I think that's been so far the most requested uh, sort of bits of content to share. Can I go for a walk mate? Yeah? A walk? A walk? <laughs> Right, so I thought I would take the dogs on a walk, um, partly to see if I could change the scenery for a quick explanation of how hypertrophy works, and then we're going to take a look as well at a new piece of literature that came out, which kind of gives a good insight into a simple application of, of how to make the most out of hypertrophy. Now let's talk about the important bit, which is the training. That's this piece of literature produced pretty recently and it's very comprehensive so I will link it down below I will also link to the video which made me aware of this piece of literature which was done by James over at Shredded Sports Science fantastic channel as well not really like body weight focused but he just you know he's evidence based and just gives good advice so check out that video he's got like a 20 minute one in which he kind of breaks down some of the key factors but actually the paper itself is relatively digestible so it's worth reading I just kind of wanted to share with you today a few key takeaways from my perspective so number one is about kind of rep schemes. When we're thinking about hypertrophy training, most people will recommend like a moderate 
maybe rep range of like six to 12, which to be honest with you, perfectly fine. Good recommendation. You're probably gonna make gains with that. Some people also take it to that higher extreme of the lighter loads, maybe 15, 20 reps as well. The evidence suggests, and I'll just read a quote here, athletes can achieve comparable muscle hypertrophy across a wide spectrum of training loads. Cool. So we can build muscle at both the lower end of the spectrum and the higher end of the spectrum. It doesn't actually seem to be comparable in terms of what end of the spectrum we use, provided that we take our training to a high level of effort, potentially going towards muscular failure in the latter sets of an exercise. That's really the more important aspect is how hard we are pushing ourselves within those sets. But I would note, and this is kind of why maybe a moderate load, I think like six to 10 rep range is great for natural hypertrophy. And to be honest, even lower if we want to get strong at the same time. And that is because if we want to develop hypertrophy, we talked about we want to have that stimulation of those muscle fibers. We know that those muscle fibers are going to be more stimulated towards that maximum end of recruitment, which is why it's important to take things to failure. However, if we're doing a set of say 20 reps, the first 15 reps of that 20 rep set really aren't going to be pushing towards that failure point. We're not going to be maximally recruiting those muscle fibers in comparison to say we're training 80%, 85%, we're going to do a five rep set. We're going to be pretty much maximally stimulating those muscle fibers for the entire set. The efficiency of our training in terms of how much time we're spending and getting the most like bang for your buck, so to say, will be happening at that lower end. That being said, the paper does suggest that it's beneficial to have a variety. So very simply, we could start our session with some strength exercises, maybe that five by five or even some lower rep stuff, and then finish it off with some more moderate accessory work, something like six to 10 reps. And this is generally speaking, how I'll set up most of my training, just generally. It's a nice, simple way this was also supported uh, when they talk about exercise selection in this study, in which they mentioned about basically using compound movements. So in bodyweight training, that's gonna be things like handstand push-up, chin-up, planche, or planche push-up related stuff, front lever or front lever row, and then maybe dips as well when talking about upper body stuff. Those compound movements, they're gonna be your bread and butter. That's gonna cause a nice stimulation of a variety of muscles. And then we might use single joint movements such as curls, tricep extensions, etc., to get maximal stimulus for aspects, usually gonna be smaller muscle groups that aren't stimulated by that main compound exercise. Simple, really. This is the stuff that most people are doing, but at the end of the day, the simple stuff works. And uh, the last thing that I wrote down in my notes is that I wanted to talk about volume because there is a relationship between increased volume and increased hypertrophy. This is a fact and it's well supported by evidence. However, one thing I thought that was very interesting that this paper recommended in some of the takeaways was that 10 sets per muscle group per week at one session was found to be pretty significant when it comes to increasing muscle hypertrophy. Now that is not a whole lot of volume. And I really like this takeaway because when we talk about hypertrophy, most people think about more volume with their training. But there's definitely a difference between what's sort of shared out there on social media in terms of the realm of natural and enhanced. If you're enhanced, very simply, you can deal with a lot more stuff. You have a lot more anabolic capacity and you can recover from a lot more training volume. If you're natural, that is gonna be significantly reduced. One of the biggest mistakes that I tend to notice people making when they're trying to train for hypertrophy is they simply do too much. At the end of the day, there is a, a, a finite amount that we can recover from. Certainly this evidence suggests that it's gonna be more about the quality of effort. So, you know, taking things to failure or certainly putting a lot of effort into our sets and then structuring our training around compound movements, some single joint movements to help with that. And then also training at a varying amount of rep schemes. So those are really like the, the bits of useful information. And, and to be honest, I don't know if it's so much useful because it's probably what ultimately a lot of us are doing anyway, but I feel like it dispels a lot of the kind of bro science advice that kind of pops up out there. Um, really keep things simple, keep things consistent. Uh, I cannot reiterate that enough. I've definitely gone much, much further down the complexity side of things in my training in the past. And by far the best results I've got is when I've kept things simple. That being said, to make this kind of clearer, what I'm going to do is get editor James to stick up a couple of example workouts over the top now for an upper body session that we might do over the period of a week that's going to fit into kind of the recommendations that I just made if, if you want to give it a try and give it a go. Obviously, it's simple. There's more advanced stuff we can do. We can do pre and post fatigue. We can do drop sets. We can do supersets. But really, this stuff is the bread and butter. This is what's going to get you the gains. It's just going to take time. Uh, and also, I need to go and crack on with a little bit of work now and then I'll, I'll share later on today my pool session and how that kind of fits into this as well as kind of the important factor which is how do we train both kind of skills 
and I purchase at the same time? Is there a conflict of interest or can we do both? That's kind of been, as I said, still a main focus for me. I want to do the cool stuff. I don't just want to look good and not be able to do the cool stuff. <laughs> I just remembered something that I wanted to mention as well. And that was, I kind of talked about using a varying amount of rep schemes. So the mixture of like heavier, harder sets and lighter, moderate sort of loads. Uh, and I talked about applying it in a session, but this can also be applied like over mesocycles as well. So as part of your periodization, we might do something called undulating periodization in which we have like a month where we do some higher rep sort of work, some more moderate load. And then we might have a month where we do lower rep and more focused around maximal strength. That would be a, a period of accumulation and a period of intensification. That's undulating periodization, a very useful tool, very effective tool, uh, but another way of setting things up. Again, there's really endless possibilities with this one. So I wanted to talk a little bit initially about handstands because although it's not directly going to be related to developing muscle mass, I kind of wanted to mention it because it definitely has some relationship to specifically shoulders and traps. The traps make up a large proportion of the back and if we have big traps, our back, especially that mid back, often a part that is kind of lacking in a lot of people, tends to look much more full. Obviously we need to consider the lats and everything else. but traps and then also shoulders i think certainly when i look at some of the shots i've done on my physique kind of my shoulders definitely are one of my better attributes and i'm sure it's just because i've spent a lot of time working on shoulder related work which is usually handstand one-arm handstand stuff so whilst the stimulus for handstands isn't necessarily in that muscle building there definitely is a benefit to doing those longer form isometrics and certainly as like a pre-fatigue essentially we're pre-fatiguing shoulders and traps before i do any of my main training so i always do about 30 to 60 minutes depending on the day of handstands prior to my main strength session. Certainly, I think there is some benefit to that for promoting growth and also muscle tone, especially around shoulders and as I said, traps. Next up, we jump into the main section of the session, which is chin-ups. Chin-ups are really the, the god of back training. Essentially, we could just do chin-ups and just get really, really strong at those. I was working on sets of four to five and because I'm still kind of in the end stages of rehab, I'm, I'm really building up. Like I started off doing just negative chin-ups when I had my injury. So this is kind of heavy for me. Uh, I'm basically working on sets of five. I'm basically working up to failure towards my last couple of sets. Now, what I mentioned earlier about the difference between body weight and weight training is that body weight training is much lighter on the CNS than weighted training. Maybe not chins, maybe not the heavier like weighted stuff, but in general, it is. We can definitely take things to failure more than we can with like deadlifts or squats. But one thing to consider is that we don't want to compromise performance. Here, I was going for sets of five and I tried to increase weight on every single set and I wanted to make sure my last two sets were approaching or getting close to failure on that last rep. Now, I'm only doing five sets here, which is probably under the, I think, 10 sets per week that I was recommending earlier based on the study. So it is a little bit low, but I do have some pulling kind of stimulus as part of my leg day from doing deadlifts and such and there's a little bit later but equally the back really isn't a big concern for me it's probably one of my better body parts in comparison to my chest and as i said earlier developing skills is still my priority so the, the next part of the session is working on the press which maybe doesn't sound particularly related to a pull day but the press is going to be predominantly down to the traps yes there's going to be some anterior delt there's going to be a little bit of pec and that pushing motion but ultimately the traps are a big element of that and the traps or on the back you can kind of put this where you want i'm working on low press here this is kind of again mainly focused around traps because we're trying to push high and get into that starting of a press position it's going to help towards l set pressed hands and it's going to help towards style to press it's a really fantastic drill but this really this is not to do with muscle building this is about keeping that skills that maintain those skills and muscle building is kind of covered in the rest of it and as i mentioned in the leg training it's not always about body weight training although i'm predominantly focused around body weight training i like to use the best tools for the job um, and when it comes to rotator cuff work, when it comes to developing biceps, can't really go wrong with weights. Some basics here, side external rotation using a cable. Cable is nice here. We have a consistent 
intensity, a consistent tension throughout the movement as opposed to maybe a dumbbell where it varies with gravity. Cable is going to be the same resistance the entire time. And a very simple combination of hammer curls. Now, I've talked about hammer curls before in their protective mechanism when it comes to some elbow discomfort because it's a really great one for developing strength in the brachioradialis. Those other muscles in the forearms that aren't the bicep as well as some of the structures in the forearm like the pronator terrace as well. Again, I've had issues with golfer's elbow a lot in the past and I found these particularly useful for connective tissue conditioning, bulletproofing those elbows, but also strengthening the elbows for things like the planche and also the one-arm chin-up. Plus, there's gonna be some muscle building emphasis as well. Note the slow tempo here. That means we get to do a relatively low amount of reps so we can go heavy, but we're gonna get adequate time under tension so there is a little bit of that muscle gain stimulus. Then finally, the nemesis. We're gonna be working a little bit of bridge training, but then trying to incorporate it into some muscle gain for mass, and that comes down to some pullovers, some simple dumbbell pullovers, a classic bodybuilding exercise. Predominantly, it's gonna focus on the lats, but it's also gonna involve some pecs as well. I try to have a little bit of pec work on my pull day as well as my push day, so I get a little double amount of stimulus for those pecs, because for me, I've got a baby chest, very much a liking body part, so I'm trying to build that up. But also, I like this drill because it helps to create range, and stretch is actually a really important part of developing muscle mass. There is actually a hypertrophic benefit to working muscles at those longer lengths. This was supported by the same study that I mentioned earlier. So actually performing movements through a greater major motion, getting a greater stretch over the muscle is gonna help elicit that hypertrophy, that muscle building response that we're after. And it helps us get more flexible at the same time. So it's like, it's a win-win at the end of the day. And finally, some bridge work. This kind of, again, falls down the same lines as the press, although it's kind of a pushing movement to some extent, the majority of the muscles being worked are going to be on the back. It's going to be the traps. It's going to be that posterior delt, which is going to be pulling us into this position. So the back is going to be working arguably not particularly well. The bridge for me, oh man, the bridge has always been a really challenging position and it's been a stubborn one. I certainly haven't trained it enough, uh, which this position is kind of reflecting on. It can get better, but it's 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 just really not fun for me. But I'm trying to I'm trying to get better at my weak points. Very simple holds here, just holding for time. And that, to be honest with you, is basically the session. That's basically it for this episode. In my opinion, it's not particularly complete. It's more about the calories you eat. And to be honest with you, not doing junk volume. That tends to be the biggest issue with people who want to gain muscle mass. They just they just do too too much and they don't focus on doing the stuff that we need to do, the lower volume stuff, but just with really sufficient quality intensity. And again, it seemed like taking things to failure was a very important part of muscle gain as well. As always, if you have any questions, any comments, any feedback, anything else that you want to mention, do so in the comment section down below. I'd highly appreciate it. I'd love to hear back from you. It's one of my favorite things about making YouTube videos is reading through the comments, so please do. Uh, otherwise, if you enjoy this one, hit that thumbs up button and support the channel right next to it. Is that subscribe button if you want to join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe. Don't miss out on any more future videos. But other than that, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a strong week and peace.